Uh, yes, warmly welcome, of course, to the seminar. Uh, and we're very uh, happy to see so many people here. Uh, and I will uh, give you our organization's reflections on this focus. Uh, we have today, we launched uh, this report and we have focused on this issue in the whole organization. And uh, the year for the book, as we said, uh, is at the same focus. It will come next year about agroecology, how we can feed the world. Uh, and I will start, uh, it's not a new question uh, about how we can feed the world. I, I think of a friend, an old friend, Malthus, uh, who had thought about this. And uh, he, he was very afraid about that the, the people will increase, the, the, amount, the amount of people will increase very fast, much faster than, than the food production. Uh, but if we look at, in reality, we can see it's not so very difficult. It's uh, look much, much better. Uh, we have a lot of food, a uh, lot of production, uh, and we think that uh, the population will stop at something like 9, 10 billion. And we know also today that we have a lot of food, but we still have a huge problem. Because uh, 900 million, I think, is today, it's got down a little bit, uh, is, uh, it has, hasn't enough food. Uh, so we have a really big problem, even that we have a lot of food, but if we have problem with the distributional effect. Uh, so we have today more or less 900 million that don't have food enough. So we have, I think, four challengers uh, in this debate. We have the, the population growth. We have the changing of consumer pattern. Uh, today we have uh, a changing in the wrong direction. More and more people in the poor countries also eat more and more meat and milk. So we have to, to change the consumption of the pattern to, to solve this problem in the long run. We also need more food production. FAO said that we need 70% increase of food production. I will come back to that figure later on. And we also know, as Fredrik mentioned, that we have a great loss of, of uh, natural capital. 60% uh, of the ecosystem services is degradation, degraded. So we have to, to solve different challenges at the same time. And one of the most famous, perhaps, is the climate issue, of course. Uh, and, and we talk about the two degrees target. Uh, if we want to be below that, and if we want to have 80% probability, we need to reduce the total amount of emissions in the whole world to 2060. When we talk about 50% to 2050, we have 50% probability. I think we have, even with 80%, is a high risk when we talk about the global effects. But we say also that the effects now says that we need to be more radical, more ambitious, because the effects in the nature is still there. We got effects even at 1.7 degrees. So uh, in our organization we say they had to need to, to decrease the emissions to more or less zero at uh, 2040. So that's a really strong, strong uh, challenge for us when you talk about how we can feed uh, 9 to 10 billion people. So we have the conclusion is that the, the Green Revolution has, has done a lot of production, uh, but we also see that it's not sustainable. We can't do Green Revolution 2. We have to change direction. More of the same is not an option. We have really to change. Uh, and how can we do that? We also know that the planet boundaries, we have exceeded the, the boundaries in different cases. Uh, nitrogen, biodiversity loss, and also climate. So we have to be inside these boundaries when we develop the new type of agriculture system. And agriculture in itself is the driving forces. Uh, we know that about 30% is coming from the agriculture sector. We know also that 25% of the food crop varieties disappeared in the 20th century. And we also know that 25 million farmers, more or less, are poisoned every year if you look at the WHO. And we also know that increasing of fertilizers has caused huge eutrophication around the world. So agriculture is not sustainable. We have to change direction. 
And in our perspective, we have some restrictions. And we think that we have to really phase out the fossil energy to 2040, 2050 in the whole world. We also know that we have to take away, to phase out very rapidly the hazardous chemicals and also the total amount of, of uh, chemicals. We also know that we have to, to reduce the amount of nitrogen, which is a very, very tough registration if we talk about more production. We have to use less nitrogen in the whole system. And we also have to increase the diversity among the crops and, not, uh, and we have to stop the, the, the loss of biodiversity in the whole system. So here are the restrictions. And the consumption of nitrogen is rapidly going up, as you see. And it's not surprising that we have a big problem with eutrophication around the world. I think it's, it's good for an economist to see how can we use the nitrogen in the most optimal way. Uh, and if you look at the right side of the, this picture, you can see the marginal cost is going up when you use more nitrogen. And you can also see that the response of each kilo nitrogen is diminishing over the time. And this, our type of agriculture system is more or less in this part of the picture. Uh, we, have not, we don't get any much more uh, output from each kilo. It's very small, you see this figure here. Put a little different in the production. But if we go to other countries which have very little of nitrogen, you can see that you put a rather big effect on each kilo uh, nitrogen. You can also say the cost is very low when you have that type of production system. You say that in, in small farmers in Africa. And here we can say that we also have uh, differences, big differences between the cost and, and, the, and the yield. So uh, our type of society is not a green economy. We have a suboptimal situation. Uh, we have more costs and benefits. And a study in EU has also uh, calculated about this and say that we have more or less 180 to 1,300 billion Swedish crowns as a cost of the use of nitrogen. So the cost is higher than the benefits. This is not a green economy. And I think we got, how we optimize the use of nitrogen is to put nitrogen from our type of society into the small farmers in Africa. That would be much more, more efficient way to use this type of fertilizer. We can also be interested to say something about the meats in, in the debate. Uh, it's still there. And some people say that we have to increase the total production. This is not sufficient. Uh, we have already uh, much of food, but we still have a uh, problem that 900 people don't have enough of food. So that's uh, not uh, the, 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 the real question. The, the real question is how we can distribute this food so that people could eat every day. We also know the debate about ecological farming. Uh, we have produced many reports that shows that we can increase the production. It's also a, a big study in, in Michigan that also shown that uh, if you go into these agroecology principles, you will increase uh, the production uh, in many countries with 80% more or less. Uh, and the decrease in the industrial countries will be something like 5-10%. Uh, so we totally can increase the total production if we practice this ecological principle. We also say sometimes that the low price is good for reducing hunger. But that's, not, that's a good, good answer because it's, it's, it's still low price, it's too low prices. We need more incentives, more stimulation that it make it more beneficial, more more profitable to produce more food in the, in, the, in, in the countries all around the world. So we, in the long run, need a higher price to get more production. It also said that may, uh, the food is a major commercial product, but it's not either true. It's, it's very much from, it's, most of the food is produced in the country and we, it's not so much on the trade, the global trade. 
And we can see that, uh, I s okay, this picture is gone. Uh, okay, I have to <laughs> take another one. Uh, it could be interesting to see also where people live. Uh, and most of the people who don't have food for the day is living in the countryside in the poor countries. So that's why we need to focus on the small farmers that we could produce where people are living. It's also interesting to see the prices in the long trend. It's going down. We have some uh, uh, what would say, ex uh, exceptions, but in the long run we see it, it's going down. Perhaps it would change when we phase out the fossil energy, but uh, we have to remember that the price has going down for the long time. I think this picture could be interesting to look at because we are back in, in a situation where we can use the fertilizers in the best way. Half of the production is today produced by the small farmers around the world. And half, more or less, is produced by the industrial agriculture. And if you use uh, nitrogen and more efficient, we have to reduce the production in industrial countries and we will increase something like 50 to 80, 100 percent. And the total effect could be something like 50, 60 percent of uh, increased production. So uh, the question for today is to try to answer how can we really feed the world by 100% agroecology. And uh, here are some suggestions of, of how we can solve this puzzle. We think it's, it's impossible, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, possible to reduce uh, the harvest losses. It's, uh, today it's more or less 30%, so we half that to 15% less harvest losses. That's one, picture, that's one part of the puzzle. The other thing is we have also to reduce the waste uh, by 50%. It's also today more or less 30%. So we half that, that uh, waste in the food chain in, in our country, for example. But also, as we said before, we could increase the total amount of production uh, if we make this switch. Uh, that we focus on the small farmers and reduce a little bit our production and, and use the resources more efficient. And we also, of course, have to change the consumer pattern. We need to, to reduce the, the, the amount of, of meat. And as we know, that uh, more or less 50% uh, of the land, agricultural land, goes to, to feed uh, to animals. Uh, and if we decrease the amount of meat, we have more or less 25% more land to use uh, in the total system. Because we also need uh, land for produce bioenergy when we are going to phase out all fossil energy. So I think it's, it shows that we have options to solve this, this question. And finally, the key issues for the future is to uh, First of all, we have to more publicity finance crop breeding because nowadays the crop breeding, uh, when it make it to make it profitable, it's uh, it's not it's not done to to produce local uh, varieties uh, because it's not profitable for them to to produce uh, special crops for Dalarna and special crops for Brussels and so on. Uh, that's that's too expensive for them. Because we need to have public finance crop breeding, so we could, could create much, much more local adapted uh, varieties. We also have to pay, of course, for the ecosystem services, and one important is the carbon sink, uh, and that could reduce the EU budget, 435 billion is going to the farmers in EU. We can use that in a more efficient way, we can pay for the to, to, to uh, the carbon sinks and, and pay the farmer for that work and produce these services. We have, of course, to phase out all harmless subsidies if we're talking about green economy. It's, it's, it's a fundamental uh, task to do that. We have to introduce the polluted pay principle. We talk very much about it, but it is not implemented. We also have to support in the aid program on the small scale farmers. That, that's the key message today that that's a, that's a big option. They can do much more production and sustainable production. And we have also have to have the same vortex on feed and food. 
Uh, today we have no taxes on feed. But that's why we have so much oil palm and, and, and soya in our production system. Uh, we have to have the same taxes on feed and food. And finally, uh, we need a huge uh, support for extension services, of course, and to spread this message around the world, how we can use it uh, how we can use the resources in a more efficient way. And I think a very interesting question for the debate later on, how can we make this profitable? How can we make signals that this will be also uh, a, a part of the market and not only selling fertilizers and chemicals? Thank you. <laughs>